All right, so let's take an adventure through our skin and also talk about the material that's right underneath it by creating a concept map or really a table to put it all together. So if you're looking at skin, this is also known as our integumentary system, our integument. And so the main part of our skin is our dermis. So the dermis is going to have a layer above it, so it's going to be our epidermis. And that's what you would consider your true integument. So these two things make up your integument. Or if you think of it, your cutaneous membrane is the other name for it. So epidermis, epi meaning above, dermis, that's the bulky part that makes the protective, well, a lot, most of your protective part of your skin. This is also protective. Underneath this is the hypodermis. It's not considered part of skin, but I still want to talk about it because it's what your skin attaches to. It helps hold it in a place. So hypo meaning below, so below dermis. It's also known as the subcutaneous layer because remember this was your cutaneous membrane. So let's kind of work our way through all of these. With your epidermis, you're looking at a lining. Anywhere in your body that you have a lining, you're dealing with epithelium. So the epithelium that you have here is going to be constantly interacting with your environment. It's gonna get rubbed, it's gonna get damaged. So we wanna have a lot of layers so you can always replace them. So we're dealing with a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So let's talk about keratinized. Keratinized means you're filling the cells up with a protein called keratin to make them tough and water resistant. So the epidermis is going to be our stratified squamous epithelium. And remember, this is keratinized. Stick it with a bunch of keratin. So the cells that you have there are called keratinocytes because they're keratin building or filled cells. Your dermis has two different tissues in there depending on how far down you are in your layer. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start with a look that's going to be pretty loosey-goosey. You wanna have the ability for the epidermis to kind of wiggle around a little bit and not be too firmly tied into the thing underneath it. So we're gonna start with areolar connective tissue. So you have a lot of fibers kind of in different directions. I guess we're gonna to try to draw this out. Eh, a few fibers, not a lot. And then what's happening as you work your way down is it gets thicker and more and more dense and you fill it in different directions with all of these collagen fibers. But up at the top, it's kind of empty. So we have the areolar part up here and then it's kind of like an ombre effect. It just fills up with more fibers as you work your way down going in different directions. It looks pretty dense. So we have a dense connective tissue here. And now the fibers are going in different directions, so we actually will call it a dense irregular. So we'll have areolar up top, dense irregular at the bottom. And of course we name the layers because they have different tissues there. So this part up top is going to be the papillary layer. Because what you're going to form are papilla. So it's going to look kind of like this at the top. You'll have little ridges and folds to kind of help hold the cells of your epidermis right under or right in one place, but also it increases surface area. So you can fit different types of cells in here. So papillary, because you are in the papilla. Papilla is a gen generic term, means nipple-like structure. So we have these folds that are going up and also allowing for increased surface area to attach your epidermis. So papillary, and then underneath, you're gonna end up with a network of collagen fibers. The word reticular means network. Now this is different than reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue is built not with collagen fibers, but reticular fibers. But the word still means the same, it means network. So here we have a network of collagen fibers allowing us to resist stress in different directions. If you, gonna, if you get poked, you don't know which direction that might happen in. We have fibers going in all the different angles to provide that protection or resistance. So this is going to be our reticular layer. Now, hypodermis doesn't have any like sub layers to it, uh, but it does have a tissue we should probably talk about. What do we anchor this all into? Well, underneath your skin, again, you wanna have a looser attachment. So you wanna be in the type of connective tissues where it allows for a loose attachment, which would be adipose. Adipose is a really good one to put here. Cause one, it does provide some cushion and support, Two, it's a, 
It's an energy storage. Three, it allows for insulation. It stores heat really, really well. And then the fourth, allowing for that independent movement. So you can kind of do this one, those moves, and you can kind of feel how it has that loose movement between skin and the tissue underneath. So this is where you'll see your adipose connective tissue. And adipose connective tissue, if you remember, look like big circles because these are big adipocytes. They have their nuclei squished off to the side and they're filled with fat to store all of that energy. But there aren't any sublayers here, it's just one thing. So if we kind of kind of keep track of what we got going on over here, here's your main layers. Here are your tissue types. Here's our sublayers. So we do have some more sublayers to talk about with our epidermis. So epidermis we talked about right here at the papillary region, those folds, there's a layer directly touching the bottom. That's gonna be the stratum basal. That means bottom or basement. So we have a bottom or basement layer. Then what's gonna happen as you work your way up, it starts to dehydrate, because these cells are going to end up dying as they get all the way to the top. These are not living cells at the top, which is also why you can lose them and it doesn't hurt. So as you work your way up, they're gonna start dehydrating. As they dehydrate, they're still attached to their neighbors. So what's going to end up happening, they're going to start to look spiky because you have these in, those inner cell connections that as the cell starts to shrivel, it's still going to hold on with their proteins. And so you're going to have a layer that starts to look spiky. So we have another stratum, stratum meaning layer. But this one's going to be spinosum for spiky. As you work above that, it's going to start getting filled with grains. They're going to start looking darker. So we're going to have a stratum granulosum. So I guess if we were trying to draw this all out and how it kind of looks, spiky layer, they're not going to be attached or connected because that's just not my artistic ability. But spiky layer, then we're up here in this layer that's got a bunch of dots. So we might still see our cells, but they're squishy looking, but darker. So that's our granulosum. Then there's a layer where the cells are kind of empty looking and clear. This layer doesn't exist very often, it's pretty thin. And it only is in places where we have what we call thick skin. So this is going to be our stratum lucidum. It's an extra layer that allows our skin to be thicker in the palms and the soles. If you feel them, they actually do feel different because they have an extra layer. Now on top of all of this, that's when it starts to look darker and flattened again, but really tall. And these are all the dead ones. We have now finished keratinizing, so these are all dead keratinocytes, squished at the top, lots and lots of layers, so you can shed it off. It can be like 20 cell layers th thick just in this layer alone. That's our stratum corneum. So by now, hopefully you've realized that I really love mnemonics and giving advice for how to remember things. So a nice trick to kind of remember all of these in order, stratum is going to be your first word for all of them, means layer. But then we have a trick over here for the first letter of each of the other ones. It's come, let's, get, sun, burned. And if you remember, the lucidum is not in all of them, so the other trick is, so if the saying is come, let's, get, sunburned, then for most of your skin, it's let's, not. It's not there. The L is not existent in most of your skin. The only time you see it or add it in your list is if your palms or soles. All right, last little bit I want to talk about as we're kind of working through our layers here are some of the cells that we can encounter. We already talked about down here we have adipocytes. Anytime you have a loose or a dense irregular connective tissue, you have fiber builders or fibroblasts, you have some macrophages in there that can clean things up. There's a large variety of what you can find in these types of tissues, but up here, we have a lot of keratinocytes. We know for sure they're dead up here, but there are some other things that we should talk about. So let's get into the cells of our stratum basal. So in the stratum basal, you have three types of cells that you can find. You can have a basal cell. That's a stem cell. That's so you can make new keratinocytes because you're constantly shedding them. Most of the dust in your house is actually old skin, which is gross when you think about it. Then you have Merkel cells or tactile cells. These provide sense of touch. 
So those ones you can identify because there's usually a rope involved. Not really a rope, it's an axon. It's a part of a neuron that sends information. So you'll find them as the ones in this layer that will have a piece of fiber coming from it to send information to the spinal cord so you can know what's going on as far as what you're touching. And then the third one is your melanocyte. These make melanin, which is the pigment. And that melanin is there to protect the neighboring cells. So they release the melanin. They'll actually, these cells will have kind of projections on them, increasing surface area, so they can release that pigment into the neighboring cells. It'll surround the nucleus to prevent the DNA from getting denatured or changed because of UV radiation. So it's to protect you from light, basically. All right, everyone, that's your skin. At least a nice overview of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.